I see a lot of videos on YouTube where people apply super glue or cyanoacrylate gel to different projects. And by and large, people do a good job. But I wanted to cover some basics because I see the same mistakes being made over and over again. This is a bit elementary, but I, I'm not sure that everybody knows it. There's a foil cap here. Typically, in the cap of the bottle, there's actually a sharp protrusion that's made to puncture this. What most people do is grab the super glue bottle up here and then shove these together. And in the process, they'll squeeze the glue bottle and that will release super glue out from the top. I've found that it's sometimes useful to grab here at the bottom, sometimes even just to set it on a table and puncture it. And then at least when it goops out in a crazy way, it's not in my hands. Super glue itself is usually pretty watery and it's designed to flow between two surfaces via capillary action. So if I put a dot here and I press these two things together in my completely contrived example, uh, I don't want a bunch of it pooling out. I don't want any excess. I just want these two things to stick together with exactly enough to fill this internal area. And inside that area, the glue will cure perfectly. Super glue isn't like urethane glues where they expand to fill a space or anything like that. You can get super glue gels that have a, a very small amount of gap filling ability, but the strength of the bond is best when there's a very small amount of glue that's exactly sealing between the two surfaces. Let's say I want to glue, you know, this screw to this washer. I apply a small dab of super glue gel, and I put these two things together, and I come back in a moment or two and it's still sloppy, and we wait a while, and come back and it's still sloppy, and we wait a while, and you can do this kind of all day, and it's just gonna keep on being sloppy and not curing. And sometimes it really seems like this is almost random, how the glue will sometimes work for you and sometimes it won't, sometimes it's messy. It always sticks better to your fingers than to anything else. I'd like to clear up some of the mystery around why it cures and what causes it to cure. Let's do a quick test. So on the left, I have an area that hasn't been treated. In the middle, I have an area that's been rubbed with hydrochloric acid. And on the right, I have an area that's been treated with a zip kicker accelerant. What I'm gonna do is take the ordinary super glue, not the gel type, and I'm gonna apply one drop to this roughened bottom surface of these metal dowels. And we'll apply one to each of these treated areas. It's actually quite a lot, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. Let's do the same thing for the hydrochloric acid treat. I'm going to do a little bit less, make it more appropriate. And one for the accelerant side. Okay, so let's go back. The no treat area has solidified. The hydrochloric acid area is still soft, so it's inhibiting the cure. And the treated side is actually quite strong. This is a crappy situation. You can see there's still a large amount of uncured glue outside of the bond. This is basically how you get to a point where you reach down here and you're gonna glue your fingers together, right? This excess is one of the things that you can treat with an accelerant. So if you spray in, uh, you'll notice an immediate change in this stuff and it's not solid yet, but it's getting kind of ridged and crunchy. Trouble here is when this is dry in about 24 hours, this will be surrounded by a white crust. And that white crust is the cyanoacrylate monomers vaporizing and then reattaching themselves to the surface. And that's trouble. The first thing you want to make sure of is that your surface is not acidic. And the second thing you want to be sure of is that you're using the right formulation. Ordinary superglue is designed to wick into a joint via capillary action. You need very, very little of it to make a strong bond. In fact, if you make a thick layer uh, of cyanoacrylate, you've done the wrong thing. So one way to apply an accelerant, and let's use that same screw that we used at the beginning, is essentially just to apply some glue 
Let's add a little extra there, just for the sake of the demo. Stick down the screw, and then spray the whole mess with the accelerant. And now, it's already gonna be hardening up. The accelerant is curing, and the part, well, if I hadn't broken it, is sort of stuck. You can get better and you can get worse. I actually feel that this is the absolute worst way to use an accelerant, which is why I started here. Okay, so I'm going to apply some accelerant to the screw, which I'd like to put down. And then I'm going to apply some glue to this washer. And then I'm going to stick these together and I should get an instantaneous bond. So that's a slightly better way of doing things. I see this occasionally from woodworkers. They'll take one side and the other side and they'll spray this side with uh, an accelerant such as zip kicker and they'll spray this side with a cyano and then stick them together and get an instant bond that way. So that's, that's a little better. Now in my opinion the best way to get a bond is actually to create a small environment where the accelerant can slowly enter the workpiece. So it's a little bit of a different approach where you take a little bit of the accelerant and you spray it into a, into a box or a container, throw in a couple of supports to rest your workpiece on. These are cut up sections of a zip tie. Apply your glue as normal so you retain the benefit of having working time. Oh, this glue, this super glue has gone crazy. Let's apply a dot there. So I could still place this here, manipulate it, move it around. When I get it just where I want it, I'm going to place it inside my curing chamber, which has a large concentration of that zip kicker inside. And if I wait just a moment or two, when I take this out, the bond is solid. This also lets you reuse the same spray of accelerant over and over and over again for a large number of parts. You can just stack them up in there and they'll all cure on their own uh, and, be, and be strong. Something that I get asked a lot is, how can super glue be removed? And from the skin and fingers, really the best method is abrasion. Uh, super glue is attacked by acetone and um, acetic acid. Both are things that you can try to remove it with, but in general on your hands, your best bet is just to uh, scrub it off. But when you have a part like this, which is resistant to solvents, you can drop it into acetone. And it takes a bit of time but acetone will dissolve the cyanoacrylate and make it possible to pull apart two parts which were previously sort of well adhered. And if you leave it in there long enough, this will peel off or crack off pretty easily. I'm gonna do another one. So yeah, if you have two things that are stuck together in an unwanted way, your best bet is gonna be acetone. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, cake. And I can feel on this side that it's, it's goopy. The longer you leave it in there, the cleaner it'll be. Now super glue is also sensitive to heat. So if we take our little unicorn here and apply some heat in the form of a torch or a lighter, it'll give up pretty quick. There it goes, and you can see it's kind of melted, almost. It's like a little bit stringy there. So that's another way. Uh, I see machinists using it in this way quite a bit, where they'll create a fixture, hold something in place with super glue, and then when they're done machining it, they'll just torch blast the part, and the glue bond is, uh, is broken.